Welcome everyone to my first ever podcast. I'm by myself today. In this podcast, I'm going to be giving you guys a full detail and going fully in depth about this second EP, what it's about, what was involved, and what was the motivation behind creating this EP. So I'm going to be doing a few questions and answers and telling you guys a little bit about this EP and what it is all about and what's gone into the detail in creating it. What's the story with this second EP? What's it about exactly? Well, this specific EP that I've written about is, as you know, titled Under the Spectrum. And it's about how me, as an individual, being under the autism spectrum experiences life. And what kind of experiences and perspectives that I and so many others have had to encounter. This is something that I've put a lot of time and effort in. And I really believe that who I am and my story of what I've been through is really detailed and really explained through this EP. I really outline and illustrate what it feels like to live under the spectrum and what it feels like to live with this condition. So what gave me the inspiration and motivation to come up with this EP? What was the main influence and the main reason for putting in so much effort into this EP? Well, to be completely honest with you guys, I wanted to create an EP that wasn't just another Aussie hip hop grime or trap album. I never really got around that particular style of hip hop. I never really identified with it or related to it, to be completely honest. I just felt like it wasn't me, which in a way for me to be an emerging artist made things even harder to break out. I wrote a lot of songs and did a lot of things musically that didn't really feel right and didn't really work for me personally. I wanted to create a music which was unique to me and that I could probably describe myself through music, but also it didn't just sound like another run-of-the-mill, this-is-me hip-hop track. The motivation and concept for me coming up with this EP and this album started when I went to Box Hill Tafe in 2018, and I was doing a course in hip-hop, the first of its kind in Australia, Diploma of Music, specializing in urban, and one of my teachers, Serene, asked me what kind of things about myself made me unique and stand out from other people. What is something about me that is unique about me or what sort of things do I incorporate in my daily life? I then went on to tell her that I've got Asperger's and then she asked very curiously, what is Asperger's? What is that? I then went on to explain my condition and why I had difficulty with such things as paying attention, staying focused, concentrating and listening and why it was harder for me to do these things as opposed to other members of my class. So the motivation to create this track and create this album was based off that day with my teacher. I wanted to create a song that would articulate and describe exactly what it feels like to live with autism and how someone on the spectrum experiences life. The idea was that I wanted to create something that was not only unique to me, but also to create something which I felt like I was really expressing who I am and was able to convey exactly what I had experienced And what exactly I have been through. How long did it take to create the CP? What was the time span of creating the CP? And what was the process in creating it? Well, as you guys know, it all started in Box Hill. The whole process and journey to create this EP, to write all the songs, to mix it, to master it, to complete the finished product took roughly a year and a half. I started writing Neuro Hero, the lead single of this CP, in about July or August of 2018. That's when I had just started and had just begun writing. Um, I wrote the first verse of Under the Spectrum in late 2014, the song, when I was going through a hard time eternally within myself and I felt like there was no one to turn to or nowhere to go to that I could let out my frustrations and feelings. I felt isolated and alone physically and mentally with no one to talk to. So I turned to a pen and notepad for comfort. After leaving and graduating from Box Hill in 2018, I continued to have private lessons with one of my lecturers, Diz, who went on to be my hip-hop mentor and continued to work with him in my own time. He would create beats and I would create the lyrics. We were an unstoppable team. We were like the Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, and we complemented each other and musically we made a great team. So all in all, it took about a year and a half of creating the CP, writing and mixing, and the process started in 2014 and then continued in 2018 when I went to Box Hill and then went to me and Diz being an awesome duo. Shoutouts to Diz if you're watching. (laughs) Do I find that I work better with someone keeping me focused and grounded as opposed to doing everything by myself, 
Do I find that it's easier to get stuff done when someone else is working on a different part of the project? Honestly, I think a lot of that just boils down to chemistry. How well you click with someone and how long you get along with them is really a big factor. If you both find that you work well together and can get stuff done, it, then yeah, it definitely helps to have another person there. And especially when you're doing the mixing and writing and recording it, it really makes a difference to have another pair of ears just to pick up on those bits and pieces that you might have left out. What kind of things did I do musically to put myself out there? Like what are some sort of things that I did to promote myself and get myself out there as an up and comer? Well, I first started really making music around four years ago in the middle of 2016. I mean, i had been rapping and writing before that, but never really as serious and consecutively as what I have been doing recently. And in 2016, uh, uh, beg your pardon, I started in, you know, I really, I mean, I'd been rapping and writing before that, but I never really as serious or consecutive as that point in time. I first really started in 2008 with my original mentor, Moses Hendel Faglin, and I'll tell you more about that later. That's where it all began. I'll explain more about that later, but when I really started to write consecutively was in 2016 to now. I went to a lot of hip-hop music events and a lot of underground freestyle events, and I went to a bunch of things and networked at music events and did a lot of things, which ultimately just didn't feel all right for me and just felt like they weren't for me. When I first dropped my EP, my first EP, E-Speed The Chronicles back in 2016, it was only a CD and barely made 50 copies. I tried and tried to get gigs, but to no avail. And then I had my, in 2017, I had my very first concert with a group I was involved in called Aardvark. And for me, that was the foundation and the beginning of my musical journey. Thanks to Aardvark, I was able to create a foundation for myself as an artist and as a musician, two much bigger and better things. And let me um, explain to you what Aardvark is. Aardvark is a music program based in Melbourne for young people who are interested in music or play an instrument, and its connections to the music industries for young people aged 14 to 25. I joined the program through Headspace when I was 23, and it really developed my skills as an artist. I got a lot out of it. Do I feel like being in that group helped me get to the steps and get to the point where I am today? Like, is there something I've done musically where I think, oh, if it wasn't for this or it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be where I am currently? Yeah, absolutely. I think it boils down to just a combination of these things. Finding the right people, finding what works for you, and having the right creative mindset and creative ideas. When you have something that you want to do, or something that you want to create, and you're relying on other people to help you create a song, or create a piece of art, or create an album artwork display, it can be very frustrating and very hard, not only to get others as well as yourself to create your art, but to bring your creation to life the way you want it to be, um, the way you want it to be. But to get your piece of artwork exactly the way you want it to be, when you're working alone or doing everything by yourself, as I've done for a long time before I met my music mentor, Diz, I did everything myself. Mixing, the most, mastering, the promotion, it was not easy. And believe me, I tried so hard to network with others and collaborate with them, but I ended up getting nowhere. Um, I ended up getting no way. They flaked. They said they didn't like how I sounded on a record. They said they were busy. I would inbox videographers and other artists and say, hey, can you do this? Or hey, can you do that for me? And I was willing to pay them for their time, but I never heard that back from them. No avail. It's weird when you're trying to get into contact people and you're trying to call them and they don't answer the phone. They say, sorry, I'm busy. Or sorry, I forgot. This is what I went through and this is what happened to me all the time. So I just got by by doing my own thing. What are some setbacks and some things that have held me back? Or what are some obstacles that have stopped me? I think the biggest thing that's held me back for all these years from releasing music and putting myself out there sooner rather than later was probably my recording setup at home before I met Diz. All I had was an old 2009 Toshiba laptop, a USB mic, and an old version of FL Studio. Those three things and beats from YouTube were the only things I had to make music with. I didn't have anyone else, I didn't have anything else, and I had zero connections to the music industry. All I had was a pen and pen and some old equipment that I got from JB Hi-Fi online. I would put up projects that were half made or not 100% up to scratch due to the fact because that was all I had. And also, it was around that time when I entered the battle rap scene, which ultimately was completely different from the Oz music scene. 
and the Oz hip-hop scene. It was almost like a completely different world. The skill set and the mindset that you have for battle rap is a far cry from the music scene. The things that you need to become a dominant, well-known battle rapper are cheese and chalk from being a good artist. It's a completely and utterly different set of skills that you need. What are my goals for the future and what do I want to be doing musically? After this EP is released, I'm going to be doing everything online or majority of the stuff online because due to COVID-19 and the restrictions and due to the coronavirus, I plan on continuing to do work on my music and release it and just take my time with it really. After this, I'm going to be releasing a full-length album with complete songs, my first ever album, which will be exciting. I'm going to be focusing on the theme which I was talking about in Under the Spectrum, which what which is what it feels like to live with Asperger's and what it is and what it's like to live with a disability and how an autistic person experiences life. That's going to be my main focus from now on musically, and everything I do musically is going to revolve around that, with an exception to, to some other songs that I'll be releasing here and there. I did a lot of things musically that... Um, by myself, do I feel like COVID has set me back? Honestly, it actually has made things a lot easier to be completely honest. Whilst COVID has set me back, it slowed me down. It hasn't stopped me. It stopped me from doing the things like busking and creating events. It's managed to slow things down. I was able to make a release plan and create release, release dates around, around when I was in isolation. We're just lucky enough to live in an age with social media. It makes things uh, a lot easier. That's about it, really. Thank you guys so much for watching this podcast, and thank you so much for watching this poll and Q&A video, and I look forward to be releasing music for you guys, and I will see you in the next podcast, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.